High Book 2. Somehow I've accumulated two stacks of books. I'm not exactly sure how that happened. Um, I haven't been frequenting that many bookstores. Um, I've been to a couple, but I've only picked up one or two books at the stores. And um, a lot of it's Little Free Libraries because I got rid of three gigantic towers of books and the bookstore didn't, didn't take them all. And so um, I had like three giant uh, grocery shopping bags full of books. And so I just went around to Little Free Libraries and donated them there. So. Most of these books I didn't pay for, which is good because I'm trying to save for my trip. And I know I keep mentioning that because like literally on my brain all the time. And it's like getting closer and closer um, as we get through July. But anyway, I, I know you're going to get sick of me talking about it. But yeah, trying to be money conscious. Um, so yeah, let's, I'll share uh, what I got. And the first one is when I, um, speaking of money, I paid for this one. Um, I went to, um, two weekends ago, I went to um, like Southern Oregon there's like a bunch of like beach towns and um so this one I got at Seawolf Books um in Port Orford Oregon and what I thought was really cool is this tiny town of like I don't know a thousand or two thousand people but they have not only a bookstore that's a mix of new and used books but it's also a community writing center and uh, so I picked up this bookmark and their logo is the wolf here um so yeah it was really cute and then showing you the book um what caught my eye was the cover I've never heard of this author before. This is um, Nicole J. Georges, and the title is Calling Dr. Laura, a graphic memoir. The chicken <laughs> and like this like wallpaper is what caught my eye. And um, when I went to go pay for it, the owner of the store said that she really liked their Instagram page. So I'll have to check that out. I haven't checked it out yet. But it says, um, it's a charming debut memoir about the psychic reading that spurs a Portland Zinester, maybe like magazine writer, to uncover an old secret about the family she never knew. So that's kind of cool. She's um based in Portland, and here's the author here. She's yeah, she's in Portland, Oregon. So yeah, <laughs> and I'll show you some of the artwork as well. It's it's in black and white. I wish it was in color like um this cover is, but that's mixed of wrong. This one, of course, is. I wonder if this is gonna be like a zany kind of memoir. We'll see. Uh, it'll be a fast read. Let me put my marks back in here. Okay. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna like, it's gonna be a whole mix mash of things. I didn't organize it at all just to pile them up so they don't topple over. It's about as much as I got. Um, but so this next one's I found at a little free library and I saw that they're Harlequin entry and the covers kind of caught my eye because they had a, like a summer look to them. But when I got home, I realized, oh, they're all part of the same series. I don't know if it's just Four, these four books in the series or if there's a whole bunch of them but I was lucky that I got um I got um April May June and July 2021 20, of what is this series called it's a Kyra and Jake investigation and they're all by Carol Erickson the first one is the setup so you can see like the palm trees and it's like the sun is what drew my eye to it and I like the Harlequin entry because they're basically like fast-paced thrillers which I really enjoy and then the next one is the decoy and with the theme park, that again is what drew my eye to it. Um, we have the bait with the beach and palm trees. And then the trap. And this is more in the city. So I wonder if this guy who's stalking with it, is he going to get closer and closer? I'm not sure <laughs> what, what this is about. But um, as far as like my um, experience with the Harlequin entry, even if they're in a series, they're pretty much standalone. I, don't, I can't think of any that would even have a sequel. But so for them all to have like four... A long going series um I don't know if this is a thing that Harlequin does all the time or what but um I, I'm intrigued haha ha. <laughs> I know I yeah I'm interested to see how, how this uh, how this goes um so yeah this will be nice summer reading and then I um when I went to a bookstore I went to my first time ever I went to a renaissance fair here in Oregon and there was a cute little bookstore in the town um, and I was in the middle of reading Juno on the Range books, and so I went to the Western just to see what they had, and I got a couple here. Um, the first one is The Guilty Guns by Lewis B. Patton, and I basically was just like thumbing them through and like um, seeing what caught my eye. This one says, after the guns ravaged the sleeping Cheyenne village, Little Dry Creek ran crimson with blood. And then this is an author. Um, this, Yeah, Lewis B. Patton is an author that I read... Um, this June on the Range, and I, I like that book. I can't remember the, the name of it off of, off of my head, but I think a lot of uh, Western authors wrote a whole, like hundreds, it seems. 
so I could easily find more of him. And speaking of authors that wrote a bunch, um, Elmore Ke Kelton. This is Long Way to Texas. I heard about Elmore Kelton last Juno Ranch, and, and um, I've seen people talk about this Juno Ranch as well, but I don't know if I've ever read him before. So I saw this and wanted to grab it. And it's like the covered wagon um, story of the, you know, the going, going across the Oregon Trail. And so this is kind of different than Juno Ranch, but the author, I know, it writes a lot of Westerns. Um, so yeah. I'm a sucker for that kind of thing and it's like funny that I live on the Oregon Trail now um so we have the next one is a Newbery winner this is The Good Master by Kate Sarity this is an honor book and so whenever I see these I always snap them up I have a whole shelf you can't see it's like well and now actually now I've, I've mixed my children's books by author before I had a whole like this that top shelf right there was all Newbery and then this one was like everything else but now I just I did it all alphabetical. But anyway, I got that one. And then I have the Jody Thomas Texas Rain. I really like um, it's kind of like faded here, but I really like uh, Jody Thomas's writing because she I think yeah she lives in Texas and most of her books I think are set in Texas, like that southern Midwest uh, region. And um, a lot of her books as well, they all have like a bunch of different characters. Like there's like three or four main characters that you follow, and so. Uh, Let's see, this one is following uh, Travis, who's a Texas Ranger, and there is Rainy Adams, who's in a fix. Um, she's on the run on the run from an arranged marriage. Um, I wonder if this is like a historical fiction. Uh, the books that I've read from her are all um, contemporary, you know, all set in Texas. But yeah, okay, yeah, 1854, Texas Hill Country. So that, that's different. I haven't read any historical fiction by her. But yeah, the cover is what drew my eye. And then speaking of covers, I saw this at the dollar store. This is Crazy Like a Fox by Melinda Metz. It's a Fox Crossing Maine novel. And I've never read anything by this author, but the cover is what drew my eye and like the, the title, of course. Um, this says, you don't have to be crazy to live here, but it helps if you are crazy like a fox. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on. It's like a, most people believe that the fox is a folk tale, um, but there's a little town in the, on the Appalachian Trail. And... Uh, they're hoping to, they're, I guess people are stopping by and they're hoping to find stories or maybe find this fox. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it looks cute. And then I have a brand Thane, A Christmas at Holiday House. It's kind of like Jody Thomas. I've read several of um, their books and I, and I really like them. Um, and this is one I, I saw uh, people talk about during December and this came out kind of recently. A couple years ago. Yeah, 2020. So, yeah. Now I have my I have my copy. I can finally read it. Let's see. Then I have Rock with Wings by Ann Hillerman. This is like a police um, detective story set in New Mexico. And the cover, again, <laughs> is what drew my eye with it being summertime now. Let's see. A Superior Death by Nevada Barr set um, on Lake Superior. And there is a murder investigation. Let me see. There's a wreck that is um, on the bottom of Lake Superior. It's been there for nearly seven decades. Um, the bodies um, were preserved in the frigid waters, but now there's an extra corpse on board. A newly slain interloper suspiciously dressed in 1920s clothing. So yeah, we'll see how that one goes. I, I've never read this off. I've never heard of Nevada Bar before. And then going back to Westerns, I have Jake Logan, The Slow Death. And actually, I have a bookmark here because um, I mentioned that I was all several of these Westerns at this bookstore. It's called The Book Nook, and it's in Canby, Oregon. A really cute um, shop. So yeah, there's this. Uh, it says a Slocum's got a bloody score to settle for a lovely lady rancher. And here's the lovely lady there. They wanted this book come out. And it has like an orange, I mean not orange, a kind of greenish orange pages. Um, it came out 1989. Okay, I'll, I thought it'd be older than that. It's that one. And then speaking of older books, um, I have a Apple paperbacks book. This is Veronica Knows Best by Nancy K. Robbins. I'm a sucker for these. Whenever I see them at Little Free Library, I'll snatch them up because it's like, I don't know, like a 30 minute read. Um, and so this is about a road trip uh, to California. And Veronica, I think she's being babysat by someone named Candy. And she's like, oh, this things are done differently in California with people like, I guess the babysitters dress differently with, the, with that kind of name. So yeah, that'll be a quick summer read. And then I have, let's see, 11 by Patricia Riley Giff. And now, like, now that I'm saying that out loud, I feel like um, this is from that TV show, Stranger Things. 
11. Oh, there's, there's a girl sitting here as well, standing there. But this is, who is Sam and what does his strange dreams mean? Um, and 11, let's see. Oh, the girl, girl's name is Caroline. And she helps the boy, um, Sam, try and um, understand what's going on. Discover who Sam is and where he belongs, is what it says. And this author, I've read a couple of her books and I actually own a couple of her other ones because as it says, she's a two-time Newbery Honor uh, winner. And so I've read her books from that. Here's another summer book, uh, a summer feeling cover. This is Hello Universe by Erin Entrada Kelly. And it says, some friendships are meant to be. And I've never read this author, but I really like the cover. Them like walking along like they're going camping but it says um there's three friends they're not friends there's three people that are get put together even though they don't go to the same school and they don't know each other at all um there's virgil who is shy and misunderstood valencia is clever and stubborn kaora um, tells fortunes and reads the stars and there's chet who's the biggest bully in the neighborhood they aren't friends they don't go to the same school but when chet um pulls a prank uh, let's see, on, their, on a guinea pig, the lives of these four middle schoolers collide in some surprising and unexpected ways. Okay, and so then going to my second stack here, we have Joyce Carol Oates. This is Night Neon. This is Tales of Mystery and Suspense. I've read one or two of her books before. I can like kind of take her or leave her. I'm not a fanatic fan and I'm not, I don't hate her either, but um, this is a collection of short stories. And I know for sure for this author, I've never read any of her short story collections. And so I thought Mer Mystery and Suspense, like that's right, right up my alley. So we'll see how she, uh, she does this. And again, I like the cover as well. And it says it's a, an advanced reader copy and it um, comes out, came out in 2021. Okay, then going to, um, let's see, I'll move these over a second. Okay, we have New Kids in Town by Janet Bodie. This is oral histories of immigrant teens. And it's like little quick chapters on a bunch of, um, I think it's nonfiction as well, a bunch of um, students. Let me see if it's marked as nonfiction or not. Does it say anything? No, um, but maybe it, I mean, it might be nonfiction. Um, but it's like um, there's children from, there's like one kid per country, and there's like Cuba, Philippines, China, India, Mexico, South Korea. Yeah, and so on. So this would be a, a quick read as well. I don't know, it's like maybe like 100 pages or less. Um, so yeah. And then I have, um, can you tell how summer's on my brain? Because I have another, yet another summer book. This is Dorothea Benton Frank, All Summer Long. I really like this author. As the blurb says here, is sassy southern fiction. She's the queen of sassy southern fiction. And I tend to read one of her books every single summer along with a whole bunch of um, authors and I'm almost never disappointed. And so let's see, is there any little quick blurb here when it's about, um, and she tends to write like, you know, like women's fiction or like, you know, family drama kind of things. But let's see, there's a charming New York City couple, prominent interior designer Olivia and her husband Nicholas, an English professor and, true, and a true Southern gentleman. They are polar opposites, yet magically, ma ma magnetically drawn together and have been in love for more than 14 years. And they're, they're um, preparing to relocate in Charleston, South Carolina, and we'll see how that transition happens. Let's see, we have The Map of Me by Tammy Lewis Brown. And the cover doesn't do much for me, but the description what, what drew my eye because, um, well, well, maybe, not drew my eye. well, maybe I picked this book up because it says, um, mama left a note on the refrigerator saying, I have to go, but go where? And so Margie is convinced that she knows the answer. Mama hasn't run away. She's run to the rooster romp at the International Poultry Hall of Fame in search of a deluxe limited edition penny penny coin canister to add to her precious flock of chicken memorabilia. And it's up to Margie to bring her home. A canister and all. So, so that's what drew my eye. I'm like, okay, this is going to be an interesting book for sure. And there's a chicken here on the back. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, okay, kind of going back to the New York couples. There's The Futures by Annie Petoniak. 
and this is about a, um, I think it's a successful like New York couple. This is, um, it's in the summer of 2008. A young couple moved to New York City in search of success, only to learn that the lies that they dream of, let's say that the lies they dream of come, what? That doesn't make any sense. Only to learn that the lies they dream of come with dangerous strings attached. Okay, there you go. So 2008, we all know what happens there. So um, I'm assuming <laughs> maybe the dreams plummet. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, and the author, well, I looked at um, her bio. She grew up in British Columbia and she now lives in New York City. So I'm not sure if it's like auto fiction, um, but for sure she knows uh, what New York City is, is like. Then we have Buckaroo Heart by Rick Stubber. This is not a book I found at that bookstore. This is one I found um, at a little free library. And when I opened it, I saw that it's, it's not only signed, but there is um, a bookmark from the author. There's like pictures of him. And then a list of all of his books. And it also includes a, um, like, a like a pamphlet for this book. I'm not sure if there's like um, an advanced reader copy or... Or what? Or maybe this person went to um, like a book signing for this author. But it says it's um, it's the true story of one man's incredible journey. Um, Dave might have been content to lead the life of a simple cowboy, but he believed in the American dream. Started a construction company and rode the crest to a building boom to the pin. Oh, hold on. And rode the crest of a building boom to the pinnacle of success. When the Great Recession hit and interest rates topped twenty four percent. He lost it all. He drowned his he drowned his failures with alcohol. Then one day, out on the broad sweep of the desert, um, let's see, God had a, God and Satan had a fist fight over his alcoholic soul. This is the powerful story of profit and loss, weakness and strength, love and forgiveness, deliverance and redemption. Okay, this is a better man. Oh, hold on, I'm like, I'm sitting there reading. I just realized I'm sitting there reading um the uh, a pamphlet or a new release. It's not the same book. <laughs> it's, is it the same author? Yeah, same author, completely different book. So, yeah, I was like, wait a second. This doesn't sound like what I picked up. It doesn't sound like, cause this looks like a love story. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, uh, I should just run the back and stuck with what I know here. It's a cowboy and the love of his life and their story. Um, when he met her when he, when he was 21 years old, when he was a buckaroo on a, the pitch, Pitchfork Ranch. Okay, never mind. So maybe they just because this book is also signed. So I think this person like bought maybe both you know brought this book to be signed and also read the other one. <laughs> okay. Uh. Then I have a book I've actually read before, but um, I would like to reread it. This is the um, Illuminae, the Illuminae Files um, number one. This is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I read this when it first came out, and I um, got my copy from the library. Um, because it's not a book I would really want to read on ebook, and I would probably be st um, stuck with reading the um, like the iPad with the glaring screen and all that because it's um, very interestingly told. Like even the back, you can see like the blurbs and everything um, are a little bit different. There's like things that are circled and underlined, um, but it's told through like um, like text messages and faxes and like things from the no uh, notebook emails and and so on with things like um blacked out and or been like um picture of roses here and i haven't read it since this came out it says first survive then tell the truth um and it follows um mainly two characters so this is like a ya sci-fi like space opera it's kind of like how i would describe it and I, and I read the second one and i liked it okay but i don't think i've ever i'm pretty sure i never read the third one it's like Illuminae, Gemini, and whatever the third one was. But I know for sure I read the first two. So there's that one. I was like super excited to see this at a free library. And this next one as well, I was um, excited to see because I've seen this book um, going make it, making its way around book two, but I haven't read it. This is How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Vang. And I really like the cover. It's all, all shiny and... Um, it says, what makes a home a home? And it's about um, a newly orphaned um, Lucy and Sam. And they're 12 and 11 years old. Um, and it's like they forge their, um, an unforgiving landscape dotted with giant buffalo bones and tiger paw prints. Searching, searching for a place to give um, their father a proper burial. So that'll be interesting. 
And then from there, um, most of these other books are children's picture books because I think uh, like with school ending, teachers were getting rid of some of their picture books because I got a whole slew of them. And some of them I, I recognize, um, and some I've read, some I haven't. So I have the Polar Express, and I don't think I've ever read this. This was a Caldecott medal winner, and I really want to read these. Um, once I get through my Newberry uh, list that's like ever growing every year, um, I need. I, I want to get that get that through and read, and then read. Or maybe I could, you know, really these don't take that much time, so I could read them at the same time. But I just want to focus. I don't want to focus on too many lists here. Um, but yeah, so we have the Polar Express. I don't think I, I don't need any to give any uh, description here. But it even includes like the dust jacket. It's, it's torn right here, but that's it. So I, I, that's easy to tape up there. And then we have Stella Luna. This is a book I have read by Janelle Cannon, and it's about an adorable little bat. Let's see if I can show you some. It has pretty end papers as well. And again, yeah, I was surprised with this one too. It has, has the original cover, but there's, uh, you know, like the word, the text on one page, and then you have artwork. It's a really cute story. And this, yeah, and the cover too is in pretty good condition. I mean, it's a little bit like um, curling over on the side, on the top and the bottom here, but overall, it's not bad. Let's see. We have The Adventures of Be Beckle, Beekle. The, un the Unimaginary Friend by Dan Santa Santat. And this is a Caldecott winner as well. So there's the Imaginary Friend there. I'll show you some artwork here. Like walking amongst their feet. So I'll flip to one more. I'm trying to find a brighter page. Where's the... See, there's a lot of it's in the dark. So I wonder if it's like an um, Imaginary Friend that like when they're dreaming maybe or something. And then, oh, it was Polar Express. In addition, like right beside that one was this one, the Spooky Express, Washington, a Halloween thrill ride. So it's all about the state of Washington and um, what all the monsters they see. So we have Screams in Spokane. Let's see, I flipped to one more. Let's see if it tells me where. Oh, they're in Seattle now. There's mummies and wizards. Yeah, this looks like so much fun. I have to read this come October. So we have Above the Clouds, What Really Happens in Heaven During a Thunderstorm. So it's all about weather. And this is written by Stephanie Barton, Carly Barton, and Sue Millen. And it's illustrated by Kelly Minigarelli. And this, um, when I opened it up, I didn't realize it had, it's, it's signed by the authors. And it comes with a sticker above the clouds and a bookmark as well. So I have so many bookmarks now to add to my collection. I keep them in, uh, let's see, a cup right there. Um, it's going to be chock a block uh, full soon. And so the, the description says, May you always look above the clouds during every storm. I need some pictures here. Let's see that one. Let's see if there's any... And they heard when I look at the window when it's raining. So it's like really quick. That's like one sentence per page along with the picture. And then we have a horse uh, children's picture book. This is Mrs. Mack by Patricia Palaco. And like they're feeding the horses, I think. Yeah, it's weird that the, the, um, the artwork makes them look like they have something green on their hands. And I don't know what it is. Like maybe they're like mud. I have no idea. Um, there's no description on the back, but there is more illustrations. I show you some artwork there. See, there are with the horses, and this has a lot more text than some of the others. When I was reading the um, the inside description, I think it's about a ten year old girl. Maybe it's her first time with horses. I'm not sure. And here they are with our family here. And then the last picture book is um, Calling Dr. Amelia Bedelia by Herman Parrish with pictures by Lynn Sweet, um, Sweat. And I looked, last month I got um, an Amelia Bedelia book and I was like, I found a second one. How cool is that? I still need to read the first one that I got, but I saw this and just, I had to get it because I, I love um, the Amelia Bedelia stories because I vividly remember reading them all the time when I was in kindergarten.
But yeah, she's she always gets up to trouble. <laughs> That's what I remember. And she had like stuff flying everywhere on her bag. And then switching gears completely, um, I have the historical atlas of Native Americans. It's 150 maps that chronicle the fascinating and tragic story of North Americans and indigenous people. And this is by Dr. Ian Barnes. And I saw this at a little school library and had to get it. It's a text, not, kind of a textbook, but um, it tells, it goes through time chronologically. And then it shows you where the different, you know, tribes have moved. And, you know, and then it gives a huge, like, dense description of it. And it and also includes some pictures of um, some of the people along with, like, you know, what, you know, what resources were they using, what their houses looked like, things like that. So, yeah, I might just flip through this and look at the pictures or I might read it all completely. I'm not sure. The font, like, the headers and everything are fine to read. But the font itself is so tiny. <laughs> it's so tiny. Um, the one book, let's see if I can grab it real quick. I really, really like this one. Um, it's about uh, the Native Americans. And this is called 500 Nations by Alvin M. Josie, Joseph Jr. And it's an illustrated history of North American Indians. And this is a fantastic, fantastic book. Um, and, and the font is easier to read. But um, it has, like, beautiful pictures as well. So, yeah. Um, if you're interested in, like, reading about Native Americans, and this, I, this was really good. And this one might be really good as well. I'm not sure. But just, like, the font is so tiny. I need, like, a magnifying glass to, <laughs> to, to zoom in there. But the maps and all of that, I, just find, I find fascinating. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. For sure when I flip through this one. But, yeah. Those are all the books that I have picked up in the month of June. I think I need to stop <laughs> because, um, yeah, I, I'm, I don't want to pick anything up in July, uh, because I'm going to be going on a 30 day road trip and, I, and even with that, I don't want to pick up too many books. Um, but I would like to stop at some, I, I, I can't resist. I had to stop at some bookstores along the way and maybe like just mail them back to me. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. Uh, but anyway, I will talk to you soon. Thanks book too.